Seoul's skyline is about to be radically transformed. South Korea is engineering some of the most audacious mega projects on Earth. These aren't just buildings, they're statements of national ambition that defy conventional engineering wisdom. From an airport rising from the open sea to a tower designed to disappear completely, what you're about to witness represents billions of dollars betting against the impossible. And the number one project on this list breaks a boundary so fundamental, it challenges the very definition of what a landmark can be. Number one, Tower Infinity. At the pinnacle stands a structure that shatters the fundamental purpose of architecture itself. Tower Infinity will rise 1,470 feet into Incheon Sky, becoming the world's sixth tallest observation tower. Then it will disappear. This is the planet's first invisible skyscraper, a monument to everything and nothing simultaneously. The philosophical challenge was unprecedented. Create a 448-meter anti-landmark that celebrates its surroundings by vanishing into them. The team at GDS Architects faced a brief that sounds like a Zen koan. Build something massive that practices architectural humility, create presence through absence, achieve monumentality through invisibility. The invisibility system reads like science fiction, but the technology is already being installed. 18 high-definition optical cameras positioned at three different heights on six different sides of the tower constantly capture real-time footage of the surrounding cityscape and sky. A high-speed digital processor, essentially a supercomputer dedicated to this single task, takes these 18 separate video feeds and performs real-time image processing. It scales each feed to account for perspective, rotates them to align perfectly, and merges them into one seamless living panorama. This isn't a static image, it's a dynamic real-time reflection of the actual sky and city, updating multiple times per second to capture everything from passing clouds to flying birds. This processed panorama is then projected onto the tower's massive LED facade system, millions of individual pixels working in perfect synchronization. The LED system is so advanced that operators can alter power levels to create different degrees of invisibility. At full power on a cloudy day, the tower can achieve near-perfect camouflage from certain angles, becoming nothing more than a shimmer in the air. The effect is most dramatic from the bridge connecting Incheon Airport to Seoul, where millions of arriving visitors will witness a 1,470-foot tower simply not existing where it should be. The illusion is precisely controlled for safety. From aircraft altitude, the tower remains perfectly visible, its solid structure clearly defined. As architect Charles Wee explained, planes and birds won't see the tower as invisible. The LED arrays are angled to only affect ground-level viewing angles, and regardless of invisibility settings, there will always be a flashing red light. We can't make that disappear. Aviation safety trumps architectural illusion. Inside this disappearing giant, 1.56 million square feet of space will house a complete entertainment complex, a 4D theater, multiple restaurants, observation decks, and even a water park. The main observation deck at 397 meters, 1,302 feet, will rank as the third highest in the world, offering views of Seoul, Incheon, and on clear days, the mountains of North Korea. The project has been a 20-year odyssey. The design won its international competition in 2003, received government approval in 2013, but didn't break ground until November 2019. With completion now targeted for 2029, Tower Infinity will have taken nearly three decades from concept to completion. Tower Infinity represents peak national confidence, a nation so assured of its technological supremacy that it builds a half-kilometer tower just to make it vanish. This isn't hiding weakness, it's flaunting strength. The message is unmistakable. South Korea has transcended the primitive need to dominate skylines. While other nations race to build the tallest, Korea builds the first invisible. The technology of disappearance becomes the monument itself. In a world obsessed with being seen, with Instagram moments and architectural selfies, Tower Infinity achieves the ultimate power move by choosing when to be invisible. It's a structure that asks, what if the most impressive thing we could build is something that refuses to impress? 
what if true architectural confidence means having the power to disappear? It's a tower that exists most powerfully in the moments when it doesn't appear to exist at all. Number 2. Chungna Hunnel Bridge While others abandon superlatives, the third Incheon Bridge embraces them with surgical precision. This isn't trying to be the longest bridge in the world. It's something far more specific. Home to the world's highest observation deck on any sea bridge, period. The deck sits 604 feet above the ocean, higher than the Space Needle's observation level, but suspended over open water. The record has been officially certified by the World Record Committee, but the engineering drama of this $560 million project isn't the height. It's the curve that should be impossible. This 2.91-mile cable-stayed bridge deliberately bends across the water. For most bridges, a curve is a compromise forced by geography. For the third inch in bridge, the curve is the point. It creates a graceful arc across the Yellow Sea approach to Incheon International Airport, turning utilitarian infrastructure into kinetic sculpture. But curves in cable-stayed bridges create massive, unbalanced forces. The cables can't be arranged symmetrically, which generates enormous transverse moments, sideways forces that want to twist the bridge until it tears itself apart. Engineers fought physics with more physics. They intentionally tilted the main pylon. The tower is designed to lean on purpose. Then they arranged the support cables eccentrically, deliberately off-center in a precise pattern. The controlled asymmetry of the leaning tower perfectly neutralizes the destructive asymmetry of the curve. Every cable, every angle, every lean is calculated to create equilibrium from chaos. The bridge carries six lanes of traffic, but what makes this project revolutionary is that unlike Incheon's two existing airport bridges, both of which ban pedestrians entirely, this one was designed from day one as a public experience. Dedicated walking and cycling paths run the entire length, protected from traffic, but open to the sky. Imagine biking three miles through the sky, 600 feet above open ocean, with Seoul's futuristic skyline ahead. On clear days, you'll see cargo ships passing beneath your feet. This isn't just transportation infrastructure. It's the world's longest and highest ocean-spanning public park. The bridge cuts travel time from Incheon Airport to central Seoul districts like Yuido to just 30 minutes, solving a critical logistics bottleneck. But its true genius is transforming necessary infrastructure into destination architecture. The mayor of Incheon explicitly stated the goal create a globally renowned landmark. The world record observation deck wasn't an add-on. It was the entire point, turning a piece of infrastructure into infrastructural tourism. This is weaponized engineering, using that certified world record as a global marketing hook. The bridge proves that sometimes the best way to connect two points isn't a straight line. It's a carefully calculated curve that creates a world record in the process. Number three. Busan Lada Tower. For 20 years, this waterfront site in Busan was home to a failed dream, a 1,674-foot supertall designed by Skidmore, Owings, and Merrill, the architects behind the Burj Khalifa. It was supposed to be the gateway to East Asia, a 107-story colossus. The original Somme plan was pure vertical dominance, a slim three-sided tower shooting half a kilometer into the sky. Then, after two decades of delays and financing failures, Lada Corporation made a decision paralleling Hyundai's. They scrapped the Supertall entirely and handed legendary architect Kengo Kuma complete creative freedom. His response was revolutionary. The new design stands at 67 floors and 1,132 feet. Significant, but not record-breaking. Height was never Kuma's goal. He wanted to create a tower that doesn't fight the ocean, but becomes the ocean. The entire facade is wrapped in continuous horizontal bands, engineered to capture what Kuma calls the rhythm of waves drawn by passing ships. These aren't decorative appliques. They're structural elements that alter how the building interacts with light. The engineering is deceptively complex. The horizontal bands blur the boundary between spandrel and vision glass, using varying transparencies and tints that shift throughout the day. The glass itself becomes a living surface, mirroring Busan's coastal light in real time. 
The materials, specialized glass, aluminum fins, and louvers, are calibrated to shimmer like the surface of the sea, creating an effect where the building seems to ripple. At the summit, something magical happens. The solid horizontal bands that define the tower's body begin to dissolve, transforming into delicate fins and louvers that get progressively lighter. The observatory at the top doesn't terminate the building, it evaporates into the sky, creating what Kuma describes as a structure that seems to float in the air. This is Busan's declaration of independence from Seoul's architectural philosophy, where Seoul built the 1,821-foot Lotta World Tower as a monument to pure height, Busan chose integration over dominance. The city is making a statement. We are not Seoul. We are the ocean city, and our landmarks will speak the language of the sea. Breaking ground in August 2023, the project hit delays just eight months later for design refinements. Kuma's team is obsessively perfecting the facade system, with completion now targeted for 2028. This tower represents a skyscraper that achieves icon status not by dominating its environment, but by disappearing into it. It's a vertical landscape proving that the most powerful architecture doesn't shout, it whispers. Number 4. Hyundai Global Business Center The Hyundai Global Business Center represents the most expensive strategic pivot in corporate history. A $14 billion monument to killing your darlings. In 2014, Hyundai paid a staggering $7.35 billion just for the land in Seoul's Gangnam District, the highest price ever paid for land in South Korea at that time. Their original plan matched that ambition. A 105-story, 1,867-foot supertall that would dominate Korea's skyline, surpassing even the Lotta World Tower. The design called for 926,000 square meters of floor space in a single imposing spire. Then, Hyundai's new leadership did something unprecedented. They looked at the exponentially rising costs. Construction expenses for buildings over 50 stories don't just increase, they multiply due to wind loads, elevator requirements, and structural complexities. The premium for those extra 55 floors to reach 105 wasn't just expensive. It was cannibalizing the budget for Hyundai's actual future. So they made a shocking decision. They canceled the Colossus entirely. This wasn't downsizing. It was strategic surgery. In place of one mega tower, three 54-story buildings will rise around a massive 1.4-hectare urban forest, a public green space twice the size of a soccer field. The Seoul Metropolitan Government fought this change in a years-long battle, desperately wanting their landmark super tall. City officials saw the tower as Seoul's answer to Shanghai's financial district, a symbol that South Korea had definitively arrived on the global stage. But Hyundai's new vision was even more ambitious. The company is taking the billions saved from not building a record breaker and pouring it directly into their next generation technology divisions. Out of their recently announced 125.2 trillion won five year domestic investment plan, 36.2 trillion won goes to both constructing this new complex and building out their artificial intelligence, software defined vehicle, and robotics facilities. The GBC has become the physical manifestation of this pivot, a statement that 21st century dominance is measured in processing power and patents, not meters of concrete. Foster Plus Partners, the firm behind Apple Park, designed this radical reimagining. Their vision transforms corporate architecture from monument to ecosystem. The three towers are connected by bridges and wrapped around that massive urban forest. This green heart was the key concession that finally ended the standoff with Seoul's government, transforming a private campus into a semi-public amenity. When it opens in 2030, creating 56,000 jobs, this complex will represent a corporation publicly admitting that the age of the super tall is over. Hyundai, a company that symbolized South Korea's industrial rise, is declaring that the metrics of success have fundamentally changed. The GBC is a $14 billion bet that in 20 years, no one will care who has the tallest building. They'll care who has the smartest one. Number 5. Gadiokdo New International Airport, $10 billion. That's what South Korea is spending to build an entire airport in the open sea. The Gadiokdo New International Airport isn't just ambitious, it's a direct challenge to the forces of nature itself. 
This massive complex will rise from 6.6 .6 million square meters of reclaimed ocean off Busan's coast. That's roughly double the size of Central Park, carved directly from hostile waters. The site faces typhoons, 100-foot waves, and sits directly on a major bird migration route where strike risks are 246 times higher than normal airports. The Ministry of Land, Infrastructure and Transport's own assessments cite severe engineering challenges including difficult excavation and uneven settlement on the unstable seabed. But here's where it gets truly impossible. The government demanded this engineering marvel be completed in just 84 months, not because it's technically feasible, but because they need it operational for Busan's 2030 World Expo bid. Think about that timeline. Seven years to reclaim land from the ocean, build fortress-level infrastructure, construct a 3,500-meter runway, and create a terminal complex for 23 million passengers annually. For perspective, Hong Kong International Airport, built on reclaimed land, took over eight years just for its first phase. The timeline was so aggressive that Hyundai Engineering and Construction, South Korea's largest construction firm, publicly declared it unsafe and walked away from the project. This is the company that built the Burj Khalifa's structural framework. When Hyundai ENC says your timeline is impossible, you've crossed from ambitious into dangerous. The transport minister was forced to publicly admit that rigidly adhering to the 84-month deadline is not desirable, acknowledging political goals had overridden engineering reality. To fight both nature and time, engineers are deploying fortress-level seawalls designed to withstand 100-year storm events. The entire project runs on digital twin technology, building the complete airport in virtual space first, testing every beam, runway, and foundation pile. Building information modeling systems simulate construction logistics, identifying potential delays before they cascade into disasters. This digital approach is critical because there's zero margin for error. The airport is being marketed as South Korea's first true quattro port hub seamlessly combining air, sea, rail, and road transportation. If they pull it off, it transforms Busan into East Asia's logistics capital. If they fail, it becomes a $10 billion monument to political hubris, a half-built skeleton slowly being reclaimed by the sea. The fast-tracking from an original 2035 completion date to 2029 wasn't based on breakthrough construction techniques. It was pure political will, attempting to bend the laws of physics to an election promise. These five megaprojects reveal South Korea's evolution from competing on scale to competing on impossibility. Tower Infinity transcends physical reality entirely, becoming visible proof that South Korea has entered an era where the technology is more impressive than the structure itself. Incheon's bridge turns infrastructure into art, creating the world's highest cycling path over open ocean. Busan's tower becomes one with the sea, rejecting height for harmony. Hyundai's headquarters celebrates what it chose not to build, turning architectural restraint into a $14 billion strategy statement. And Gadokto Airport? It declares war on the ocean itself, risking $10 billion on a timeline that its own contractors call impossible.